you, Lancer. And Definitely, Kojo. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got 258 constituencies, let me just say. And uh, as it stands now, as the figures are displayed on your screens, uh, President Kufado has uh, some 51.32% of the votes we've received. And the NDC's John Dramani Mahama has 47.28%. Uh, like Kojo says, uh, we've got quite uh, some road to cover and so uh, do stay with us here as we work with our correspondents in the various regions and constituencies uh, to bring us details of all the other uh, uh, constituencies and outstanding regions but daniel it's been a journey since uh, december 7. Um, obviously we're expecting that by now the ec would have declared the results uh, because they were hoping to do so 24 hours after yeah. the close of polls mm. we heard from madame G Mensa, a little after midnight mm. uh, today and uh, she explained why they were unable to do so so talking about difficulty in some of the officials reaching constituencies and contest of results mm. and all that uh, but then she said by close of day Wednesday they will declare the results already uh, we've seen what the two major political parties have been doing and um, we, we have a reaction on that. We'll be bringing you that shortly because uh, the PPP's presidential candidate, Bridget Jogwenuku, has something to say about uh, what's been happening while we wait for the Electoral Commission to release the results. Daniel, but our map is filling up. Definitely 258 Definitely out of 275 burners. constituencies. Yes. Um, quite a lot of covered ground. I want to begin from the parliamentary poll, uh, Bernice, and we are still getting some more data. Uh, because the, the parliamentary election really has become the most talked about. Yeah. Um, in this particular election, I'll take you quickly to the Greater Accra region, where what used to be a blue wall is gradually turning green. Look here at the Tema constituencies. Tema East has held, uh, the MPP has held Tema East for so long, um, save 2012 when the NDC won presidential. This has voted MPP since 1996. This election, um, we see Isaac Odamtin of the NDC winning 55.5% mm. of the vote against Daniel um, Titus Glover, mm. who was a deputy minister, very popular um, there. Daniel, are we able to determine what that constituency voted in terms of presidential? Since it appears yes, to be a Yes, yes, I can new... easily. I can easily do that. Um, so let me just take you to the presidential 2020 poll. There you have it. John Dramani Mahama winning. Um, if you look at the, the margins, though, you realize here that uh, John Mahama had 37,940. President Ekufuado had 35,392. That's north of about 2,000 votes. So uh, let's go back to the parliamentary and mm -hmm. see what mm -hmm. that tally was like so that we can compare where the votes came from. Here you see a yawning gap, 41,000 uh, won by the NDC. 32,000 won by Daniel Titus Glover of the NPP, nearly 10,000. So um, you realize about, yes, about 9,000 votes. So you realize that where President Kufado's approval rating seems to be higher, the gap is 2,000 votes. Um, Daniel Titus Glover seems to have lost a lot of popularity, has lost a lot of ground. Remember, he's been around um, for quite a while. I want to take you to the Lejokuku constituency, um, Bernice, next. Again, a constituency that is a, is a swing constituency for all intents and purposes. Um, the NPP held it with Dr. Bernard Okoboy. I'll, I'll, quickly, I'll quickly bring you the, mm. the trends. But, but, but this is not as blue as Tema East, what you showed us uh, with, with what we are seeing with this particular constituency. No, Lejokuku is a swing constituency. Mm -hmm. Lejokuku is not a... Um, it's, it doesn't lean anyway. If you look here, um, 2000, 2004, the NPP won. 2008, 2012, the NDC won. Up until 2016, Lejokuku was one of those constituencies that if you win, it means you are winning um, the, the presidential and the parliamentary, the majority in parliament. Uh, but in 2016, it changed. And it became the MP they choose is from the winning party. 
That's okay. what it became okay. in 2016. <laughs> if you win parliamentary in Lejokuku, that means that you are your can your presidential candidate. Oh, it's just an instance, so we can't make it's that. It's just instance. an instance. It's <laughs> yeah. just an instance. Uh, ben is unfortunately for Dr. Bernard Okoboy. He has no, he's one of those candidates who was very popular on social media, mm -hmm. trending yesterday. Mm -hmm. I want to quickly, uh, taking a cue from what we did earlier, I want to quickly look at what happened in a presidential poll so we can begin to make an inference. Um, here, the margin is quite large. Um, the NDC won by seven percentage points, 9,000 votes. Mm. Um, 59,096 votes is John Mohammed's tally. Mm. Mm. President Ekufuado. 50,530 mm. um, votes. So based on what happened in previous elections, except 2016 and what we are seeing now, um, it's safe to say 2016 was an outlier. It's safe to say... Because here we are seeing the NDC win presidential and parliamentary, which used to be the case exactly. until 2016. Exactly. So um, Lejokuku is not a purist skirt and blouse constituency. Really. Um, I, I want to quickly compare that 9,000 votes gap to what Dr. Okuboy did. Um, Dr. Okuboy actually did much better than his mm. presidential candidate. Mm. Um, the votes difference is just about 1,900 votes. Um, 55,938, Benjamin Nate. 54,032, Dr. Bernard Okuboy. Benes. Mm. All right, Daniel, let, let's head quickly to the Northeast region. Ilyasu Tanko is our man there. Hello, Ilyasu. Uh, we know that a lot of people are waiting anxiously to hear from the Electoral Commission on who really won the election since we have the two major parties claiming to have won. What's happening in the Northeast region? What are you able to report? Well, in the Northeast region here, it's been extremely calm. Uh, people are going about their business. As you can see right behind me yesterday, uh, this particular uh, washing bay wasn't washing, uh, wasn't operating because of the, 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 the process. But today they are out and about doing their work. And that is the situation in most parts of the region. I said in the Wale Wale area where there were some few issues with regards to the results, uh, where the NDC, where the NDC candidates uh, was contesting that particular result, but my um, understanding is that that particular issue has also been resolved. And so largely the Northeast region here has been very peaceful, uh, except that uh, there have been very interesting results that are coming, especially with regards to the parliamentary. Uh, all the incumbents, I can tell you, that have lost their seat uh, from the Yagaba Kobore, where uh, the, we had the NDC, Member of Parliament, uh, Amadou Raouf, he has loved that particular city to the MPPs, Mustafa uh, Yusuf, and also in the Yunyo constituency where we had Bipoba Nabu, who uh, was the Member of Parliament on the ticket of the NDC. That particular seat has also been lost to uh, the MPP, Oscar Lewal, and then also in the Chirpone area, in the Chirpone constituency, where the NDC used to hold that particular seat. That particular seat has also been lost to the MPPs uh, after uh, uh, Tahiro Razak, and then also in the Nalirgu Gambaga constituency, where the local government minister, and that is the big story right now in the Northeast region, the local government minister, Hajia Alima Mahama, has fallen. Uh, she has lost that particular seat to the NDC's uh, Alaji Baba Yusuf Seidu. And then also in the Wale Wale, we, in the Wale Wale constituency, we know that the member of parliament, the, the former member of parliament, actually, uh, Dr. Sagri Bambani, he was removed in the party primaries. And as we speak, the MPP has retained that particular seat with uh, Ajia Lariba winning that particular seat on the ticket of the MPP. And in the Bunkuru constituency, where the member of parliament, the former member of parliament, actually, uh, he was the same. Uh, as, uh, uh, he was the minister for Northeast region. He has also lost that particular seat. So these are the big stories right now uh, in the Northeast region. The member of parliament for the Nalirugu Gambaga, who is the local government minister, and then also the Northeast regional minister, who was also the member of parliament for the Bunker, have lost their seat uh, to the NDC. Uh, but the region largely has been very peaceful. People 
some people actually are anxiously waiting for the results, but in all, majority of people are going about their business. There are Satanko there for us uh, from the Northeast region. Uh, we'll be touching base with you again, Ilyasu, uh, as we, you know, uh, go across the country, picking up reactions to the results that are trickling in. We're still expecting uh, more results to come in. But Daniel, uh, it's interesting. Uh, he mentions Haji Ali Mahama and the Northeast uh, uh, region minister who have lost their seats yeah. to the NDC. Yeah. Now, Ben is very interesting here. For me, what stands out is what he said, that every single member of parliament from the Northeast region has lost. Every single member Whether of Whether NDC or NPP. NDC or MPP, they have lost. Uh, the two biggest casualties, of course, being Haji Ali Mamahama, local government minister, she's a stalwart in the, N in the NPP. If you look at the trends, in 2004, she was this candidate here. Uh, I quickly want to take you to the... 2004, right? I want, okay, so this time around it was in the northern region and Nalerugu Gambaga up here. That was Hajali Mahama. Even when she won, it was very marginal. You can yeah. see here 35.1% to, in fact, look, she won by. Less than about 50 votes because um, she got 11,000. Let me quickly just do the math here in case I, I, I err. 11,308. Now she and the opponent got 11,259. So um, give me a second here. Uh, good. So this will be uh, nine, this here will be left with nine, so this will be a four. Yep, she won my 49 votes in 2004. And that was the only time that the NPP has won in Nalerigo Gambaga. So it was always going to be a tough sell mm. for her. I'm going to bring you back to this year's map and what it looks like. And then she won in 2016 as well. Mm. So she won in 2004. She came back to pick it in with 35.1%. She came back to pick it in 2016 with 53.8%, which is a yeah. very yeah. impressive tally. Widening the gap there. Widening the gap there. Uh, she took advantage, you can say, of the tsunami of 2016. Because remember, the votes, the majority minority tally, the difference, um, in the 2016 parliament was 63. The NPP had 63 more seats than the NDC. That was a huge majority. That's the largest the Fourth Republic has seen. Mm. So she took advantage of that. But you don't see the constituency, you, you hardly see the constituency going NPP. Let's admit it. Now, the Northeast region, as we've been analyzing over the past few days, has gradually shifted to the NPP. And I remember very well, we came to the tally. Northeast region is one of the first regions that, um, pardon me there. Northeast is one of the first regions that we got the complete vote. And we realized that they had, the MPP polled 52.94 in presidential, 52.94% in presidential, which is the highest the MPP has gotten. Actually, it was only in 2016 that the MPP polled higher than the NDC, when they polled at somewhere about 49%. Now they've gone up to 52%. And this is the conversation that has been going on that it's because of the influence of Dr. Mahmoud mm. Baumia. Of course, Dr. Baumia hails from Wale Wale. This is the constituency Dr. Baumia is from. And you notice he came in in 2008. Um, 2008, he wasn't able to make much of a difference there. From 2012, the NPP won. 2016, they held it. We understand they changed the parliamentary candidate in 2020. So even though the NPP held the constituency, again, Wale Wale is presenting a different member of parliament. Mm -hmm. So it holds, the trend holds that in the Northeast region, all those going to parliament this year are different from those who went to parliament in 2016. Look at Yagaba Kubori. It became a, a topic of conversation when we had some flashes of violence there ahead of the elections. This uh, MPP you are seeing here in 2012 is the same Yusuf Mustafa, who um, was an NSS coordinator, was the head of the National Service Scheme. And he lost in 2016, came back 
in 2020 and now he has picked it um so it's very interesting coming in of course the biggest name there mm -hmm. will be Haji Ali Mahama. but again if you look at the trends from the Nalerigo Gambaga constituency this will not be too much of a surprise mm. Daniel let me just remind our audience that we've got uh, our colleagues uh, embedded in the in the in the camps of the NDC's John Dramani Mahama and President Kufado himself earlier we went to Elton Brobe who's presidential correspondent and he tells us that uh, uh, the president and his team are actually waiting for the declaration from the Electoral Commission uh, before we hear anything from him. Uh, but uh, we also heard from the NDC's presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama, late last night. And uh, uh, my, our colleague, Max Olagbaba, was there with him. And he uh, appeared a, a bit upset, especially at the news that he had called to congratulate uh, well, a presidential candidate. He didn't mention any names. So I'm not going to mention any names. So all he just said was, I haven't called to congratulate anyone. And he also uh, said that the NDC will resist any attempt to subvert the will of the people. Uh, we've got our fingers crossed. We are, yeah. we are still yet to hear from yeah. him again or President Kufado. But I just want you to know that we've got our team or, or our colleagues embedded in the team's of the president and presidential candidate of the NDC. And once there's any news, you will hear it first here on your election headquarters, on your Joy News channel and on Joy 99.7 FM. Uh, we'll be bringing you more uh, as we expect our correspondents, especially uh, in regions where there's a bit of uh, issue with the results. But let's take you now to the EC's press con uh, EC headquarters, is it? Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, I beg your pardon. We bring you uh, that earlier press conference organized by the EC uh, around midnight. So thank you very much for coming to the commission at short notice. We thought that it would be important to meet with you, to brief you on some issues that have arisen during the course of this evening. And I'm referring particularly to the Commission's inability to declare the results as planned at 5 p.m. today. I think the Commission had intended and had indicated its intention and willingness to declare the 2020 presidential election at 5 p.m. today. That is within 24 hours after the general election. However, we experienced a quite a number of challenges, making it difficult for us to fulfill this promise. And what had happened was the unexpected rain that occurred in many parts of the country yesterday resulted in a number of uh, you know, voting interrupted. And the result was this, of this was that long after voting some centers had to continue their voting and this led to some delays with voting and the subsequent collation of results naturally this had an impact on our plans in the sense that our officers could not collate the results and forward them to the appropriate locations as planned secondly we also experienced some challenges with the rain and particularly in some of our areas in the hinterlands but western north to be precise it was difficult for our officers to travel to the regional capital and to to send the results there so this led to some substantial delays resulting in our receiving the results late and this explains why the commission was not able to you know, release and, and, and declare the results as promised at 5 p.m. today. It's important to emphasize that the process is ongoing. As we speak, the commission has received 14 out of the 16 regional results. We have the National Coalition Center, where we've had representatives of the political parties since yesterday. We have two reps for each party and they are working with our own staff. As the results come in, the party representatives review them 
against what they themselves have received from the regions. And once they are satisfied that the results that have come to us from the regions is a true reflection of what they have received, they then append their signatures to it before the results are brought to my attention. As returning officer of the 2020 presidential elections, I then certify these results. Out of the 14 results received, we have certified seven to date, we, to, to, to this point. We believe that by the end of the evening, we would have certified the remaining seven. We are expecting to receive the two in the early hours of this morning, that making up the 16, and then it will put us in a good place to declare the results. We've also put the seven results that we've certified, received, approved, and certified on the various social media platforms and the website of the commission. So we are treating citizen, the citizenry to visit our websites and so our social media platforms to review the results of the seven regions that have so far been certified. It is so that's EC Chairperson Jin Mensa speaking earlier, uh, a little around midnight this uh, today, uh, uh, speaking about why they were unable to meet their timeline in declaration of results. Let me take you to Cape Coast now. My colleague uh, Richard Kojonyako is standing by for us. Richard, um, I, I can see very few cars on the roads. It's a similar situation here in Accra. Tell us how Cape Coast is uh, this morning as we wait for the EC to declare the results. So Cape Coast is um, um, cool as anything. Um, the atmosphere is very calm. Those that celebrated their wins in terms of the parliamentary, they are done, they did them overnight. And so the celebrations have ended. What people are keen at is um, the presidential results and they are eagerly fixated on their screens, they are waiting eagerly for the EC chair to pronounce or make the declaration that uh, this person has won, that person has won. For now, they are confused as to who really clearly is in the lead because of the various press conferences that have been done by the various political parties. They do not know who to trust and uh, where exactly the direction they are going. And so Cape Coast is as calm as anything. They are eagerly waiting for the outcome of the elections. If you look at Cape Coast South, um, Kweku Rikinhagen retained his seat. Cape Coast North, uh, Barbara AC, Asha AC was unseated. If you go to the Fantsman constituency, uh, the widow of the of the late um, Fantsman MP Kwanza Hayford also won. And so uh, Central Region, it, it looks as if that they split the seats into two. Um, one will have slight majority because we have 23 constituencies in here. The NDC is claiming they have 20, uh, 12, and then the MPP is also still claiming they have 12. So um, we are left with the Upper Dentra West constituency. That is where um, is the bone of contention. Uh, what I am learning is that they have issues with six polling stations. But earlier, when they did the counting and then they projected, the NDC candidate in there had unseated the incumbent MP for the area. But because it is in dispute, they've referred the matter to the regional um, EC office for them to ensure that there is amicable sentiment mm. and that particular Richard, constituency yeah. would be declared. And so that is... Richard, what exactly is the dispute about? Well, so... Um, the claims are that they brought in six new ballot boxes. And so when they, and the difference um, is, is, is not that much. And so when these ballot boxes, the content in there are counted, the tendency for it to sway or uh, to disturb the, the, the results that were declared earlier would be huge. And so it, it's resulted in some confrontation and some skirmishes in that part of the, of, 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 of the region. So the police had to come in, even uh, to some extent, the military had to also even come in to ensure that they send the matter to the police station. As we speak, that matter has been referred to the EC. We don't know really the substance of the arguments the two of them are making. But earlier, when the projection was made, it was the NDC candidate that was projected to have won that particular constituency. Mm. 
Richard, we'll leave it here for now uh, and allow you to uh, speak to more residents and, and get a feel of what's happening in Cape Coast. Uh, we'll touch base with you again. But let's head to the Tudu market here in Accra. Dachi Hene Nanayao is there for us. Uh, Dachi Hene, what's the mood in the market? Is it uh, as uh, calm and deserted as we've seen in other places? Well, it, well uh, it, for those of you watching us on television, you, you saw those live visuals there. Dachi Hene Nanaya, who is with Sister Station on Doom TV, uh, is there in the market to gauge the mood of patrons, traders, uh, as we wait for the EC to declare the results. Uh, in other parts of the country, we are seeing a much more relaxed atmosphere. It appears a lot of people are either indoors or uh, are just not out and about as usual. Uh, coming to work, I didn't experience a lot of traffic like I will. I don't know what your experience is, but that's why we are gauging the mood across the country, uh, even as we count down to uh, that declaration and assess the path to 50 plus one. Like I told you earlier, the PPP has released a statement and is asking for uh, there to be caution in pronouncement. And uh, let me bring you details of that. The PPP is concerned about the outcome of the 2020 presidential race and the delay in declaring a winner. We are equally concerned about the various allegations of violence and possible fraud. We would like to place on record that the PPP shall be the first to congratulate the EC's declared winner of the presidential race. In this regard, premature congratulations are out of order, particularly at this time when the election is too close to call, and that's according to the PPP. Uh, that statement continues to say, let us desist from this practice. It's been the tendency, or it has, I beg your pardon, it has the tendency to promote instability in our dear nation. We encourage the EC to thoroughly review all allegations of criminality and electoral infractions and to calm the tensions in the nation by announcing figures that reflect the true will of the people. We would like to advise all security services to act in the interest of the people of Ghana and not for or against any political party. We call on all Ghanaians to be vigilant and awake by protecting the dignity of our electoral system while the same time or while at the same time being mindful that all actions taken in this crucial period should contribute to preserving peace and stability in Ghana and is signed by Bridget Jogbenuku, who is the 2020 presidential candidate of the PPP. And election, election coverage is brought to you in association with Petrosol, clean fuel in full quantities, always a delightful experience, Cowbell Coffee, Taste It, Love It, McDonald's Shipping and Logistics Limited, your total logistics partner, Pad Ever Limited, your home of modern furniture, DDP Outdoor Limited, serving great brands for Steva, adding flavors to your life with three-year lotteries, Star 787 Hash, Ganus Premier and Biggest Jackpot Lottery and HEPA Plus Mixture for your general well-being. Back to Daniel Dazi, who is with our smart wall. And Daniel, you are in the central region now. Because yes, I am. That's where we came from uh, with Richard Kojonyak. Yeah. And as he mentioned, we do not have the results for Upper Dintra West because uh, there appears to be some dispute over yeah. counting and, and, and that's been resolved. But we do have the results for all the other constituencies and it appears to be uh, quite a bloom up there. Yes, this is for presidential. This is for presidential. So um, John Dramani Mahama, former president, actually won only four constituencies um, out of the 21 that we have so far. Because remember, like Richard said, there are 22 constituencies in the central region. Um, but if I switch it over to parliamentary, take it to the central region, it's almost split even. It's almost mm. split even. Just like he said. Yes, yes, yes. So um, from the the easternmost constituency, which is the Utu Senior West constituency, George Anderfell, 
Um, that's one of the biggest falls of the region. Um, if you come down a bit further, Alexander Penyo Markin and Mibis Hawa Kumsin, Minister for Special Development Initiatives, they both held their seats. Um, this Gomwa East constituency, Kojo uh, Desmond D. Petu, um, won there. Mm. I want to quickly All right, bring you into Barbara Asha, you see. All right, uh, Daniel, before you do, you do that, let's head straight to to do a uh, market here in Accra as we gauge the mood of Ghanaians there. And to Woody Free uh, AME office, now Woody Winnie Echemu, our to do market inside Pana, Obon's traffic, no Atsi, the Jane Dimpa, our Panso, who will say, Ebia, police, Nibi, Ejinim, our director, and Nasa. Bibisa, about the lane where no air two lane, lane where no air two lane, and to both a cast in a two lane singer, can I go up a soir, a beam called a beam. The young one is a Nippa who do an anke, Nimse, and by this time, and can quite imagine in Abosono, and Nippano and Norsusa, Nippano Norsusa, to say senior, Yehuno, Nasso, a traffic at your crew, my bet Macassa, a Nippa Bibrena, a backroom, Nippa Bibrena, a backroom, ah, almost where I had, unlike the man there. Near Nimsa Mandeno, as I say, voting the Nair try a holiday in the Nandi Pabina and Sada and my town. Nanswene Nipa Abba Town, I'm my name. Traffic out to me, Abbo Eddie Apeso, Ewaha, and Jay Sir Utimin Kane, now baby Amigine, a crowd to do a Jacassinum, a Hona, as I see, I made me report Eddie Friba, and Jay Friha, Eddie Ebachim, Ewa MPP. Headquarters or near Quaco, the air costumes. Oh, TV's Dutchy Hene Nanayao are uh, giving us a sense of what's happening in at the to do market here in Accra, and there, appear, there appears to be. Uh, quite a lot of traffic and the police is in the uh, well that part of town appears to be going back to normal see but let me take you to the ec headquarters now uh, chrissy parker wilson is there speaking to the ndc's koku anyidoho yeah they're on the line check there yeah parker please take it away Mm. Uh, well, we, while we wait for uh, Parker to, to, to get to us, I think there's a bit of a problem there. Uh, he hearing us. He's currently at the EC's headquarters at the National Collation Centre, as is being called now. And uh, where well, we have reps of all parties, but uh, just there in our shots, I saw uh, the NPP's uh, Evans Nimakun. And he was speaking to him there. Uh, Parker, if you can hear me, uh, please uh, speak to your guests. Yeah. Just behind me is the National Collation Centre, where the Electoral Commission is collating all the result, the presidential result from the 16 regions. We are told that uh, there are about 14 uh, results from 14 regions that have come in so far. Now, today is the big day for all the parties involved in this year's election, especially for the NPP and NDC. Now, I have with me uh, an observer, uh, Mr. Koko Hido, who used to be a former NDC uh, Deputy General Secretary. In this election, as you can see, his tag uh, is written an observer, so he's not representing the NDC here. And I also have with me the director of election for the governing NPP, uh, Evans Nimako. Now, uh, let me start with you, Evans. Um, today is the D-Day for the, the, the NPP. I want to find out from you, what are your expectations for today, sir? Thank you very much. I think today is the D-Day for the good people of Ghana. We've gone through this process together as stakeholders, you, the media, political parties, the EC security agencies. And you kept our calm, and you're expecting that the ECU today put together the results from all the 16 regional coalition centers and let the people of Ghana know who they've decided for to be the president for this country. So today is a special day the good law has made. You must be glad and work together as a nation with one common destiny that we should have the future at heart and protect the interests of Ghana. For us as New Patriotic Party, we play to the rules of the game. We expect that 
other stakeholders, especially you, the media, the EC, the security agencies, and the good people out there, to ensure that we protect our country, God being our helper. I, I, as at midnight, uh, we were told by the chairperson of the commission that they have received about 14 results. Um, it's about 10 a.m. Um, the other two regions, are, are, are you aware whether they are in or not? Uh, for, for us, we are waiting for the EC to finish out what they've received from the regional collection centers. So the 14 still stands? Yes. We haven't received any other results? From yeah, yeah, we've, we've just been giving greater care okay. uh, to uh, vets and uh, our agents are in there looking at them. But you know this whole election arrangement, the EC was expected to post copies of the results for the public to see. And the new patriotic party uh, we did our paravota tabulation. And so we know exactly where we are. We are only waiting for the EC to go accordingly by the law and put out the figure they have. And so we are keeping calm. We've asked our supporters, we've asked our members to keep their calm and wait for the Electoral Commission to do the final announcement. Now, talking about tabulation, I mean, um, your party, I mean, the General Secretary uh, was, was asking the members of the NPP uh, to celebrate because the party pairs had won. Clearly, uh, you are undermining the authority of the Electoral Commission. They are the ones who declare the result, but your General Secretary sought to infer that the party had won the election. The General Secretary put it out there and we took the media to our collation center and said that these are figures you've picked from all the 38,622 polling stations. And we expect them to know. And so the general secretary informed our party members that looking at what we have collated from all these polling stations, the new patriotic party is in comfortable late. I see. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'll come to you. I'll come to you. Stay with me. Stay with me. Um, uh, Mr. Kokoi is always laughing. I don't know why. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because because Kokoi is here. He mentioned comfortable lead. I'm sure you remind you a lot about uh, 2016 elections. <laughs> well, Parker, he does. He does. He, he must come and pay me. I mean, uh, I have patented comfortable lead. So anybody who takes that, those, those, come and pay me, you know? Otherwise, I charge you in court. <laughs> anyway, yes. But, but what has been your own observation? I see you are an observer at the Atamos Institute. Uh, you've been monitoring this election. Yes. What has been your own observations? Well, Parker, um, thank you very much. I think that, um, yes, like you said, I'm observing for the Atamos Institute, the leader of the team. Personally, I was in the Volta region. Uh, other teams deployed to other regions, Ashanti, Eastern, Central, Greater Accra, and elsewhere. My general comment, which is a personal general comment, and I'm allowed to say that on behalf of the Institute, is that the election ran in a very free and fair manner, peaceful. Uh, in the Volta region where I was crisscrossing from the northern side of it to the middle belt to the southern belt, I'm sure there was no intimidation. You know, all the initial talk that there was heavy military presence, and, and that was going to intimidate voters. I didn't see anything like that. You didn't see heavy security presence in the voter? Any military presence that you saw had to do with the hitherto secessionist thing that had been spoken about. So, yes, yeah, some, you know, minimal military presence just for that, but not at polling station. In fact, I didn't see any soldier at any polling station where I went. The, yeah, you, you will find police, you will find immigration, you will find SEPs fire service and prisons. That was it. No military presence at any polling station where I went to, where my team went to. So then the electoral process itself. And I'll commend Jean Mensah and her EC. As we have commended all from the days of Odron, Nana Odron Mapao, through Justice Ofori Boating, through um, Dr. Farijan, through Charlotte Osei, and now Jean Mensah, as a nation, we must just be able to tap ourselves on the shoulder and say, we have progressed since 1992. This is the eighth since 1992. And this year's, what Jean Mensah and her EC have done, super. The initial narrative, as if to say those BVDs had been programmed to run the elections in the direction of one political party, is not true. Those BVDs were not programmed to run the elections in the direction of any political party. You will go. If it's you, Parker, verified. If it's Koku, verified. If it's my brother, Nimaku, verified. And the open declaration of results in the open, the pink sheets signed by agents. 
And let's just allow our viewers and Ghanaians to know that it will always be the case that you have the NDC and the MPP. So the fact that you didn't have agents for some of the other political parties in most of the polling stations does not negate the authenticity of the pink sheet. If you didn't have an agent, you didn't have an agent. So if it was only MPP, NDC, they both signed, they have copies of the pink sheets, that's it. So nobody should sit anywhere and say because other agents didn't sign. So the pink sheet is not an authentic one, it's not true. They, they slept on their rights. And MPP, NDC, sent agents, signed, that is it. So on a general consensus, the 2020 elections went on smoothly. Now, talking about smoothly, there are many who have also argued that um, we voted on Monday. Today is Wednesday, even though the EC has assured us that we're going to declare the result uh, this afternoon or midday. Uh, they say if we had adopted the old approach where the results were coming in directly from the various constituencies, by now we would have known um, the, the party uh, winning this election. Uh, for you as an observer, perhaps do you think that the approach where we have to do regional coalition before the national coalition was the best, as some have argued, that clearly this is not the way to go? But uh, Parker, with the constituency results, we were running to 72 hours. As it is, Voting ended 5 p.m. on Monday. So yesterday, 5 p.m., Tuesday, was 24 hours. So we have not done 48 hours yet. We haven't done 48 hours. We have not. We are still within a little over 24 hours, 48 hours. I don't think we'll get into 72 hours. So that argument that it must come from the constituency, but it's the same thing anyway. It will get to the region and come to national, whichever way. I don't think we'll go beyond 48 hours. I don't speak for the EC, but I don't believe we'll go beyond 48 hours. Anything below 48 hours, it reduces tension and it justifies the system that has been put in place for this year's election that we won't keep this nation on tenterhooks beyond a certain acceptable period. So that yesterday we were told at 5 p.m. that we're going to declare the result and that didn't happen. It wasn't in the CI, so it's not law. It was just the thinking, it was the administrative thinking of the EC, that pair what they had put in place. They can do it in 24 hours. So if they, didn't it, if they didn't do it in 24 hours, you can't take them to court. It was an administrative system put in place. So anything in 48 hours, I'm sure. Then again, considering what was happening yesterday, anything in 24 hours without appreciable acceptance of results that had come in from all the regions could have sparked chaos. So if they are waiting a little bit more beyond 24 hours, now 14 regions have come in. We're waiting for two regions. Let the two regions come in, the results will be declared. And I'm sure, as it is now, here in the National Coalition Center, at least the MPP is present, the NDC is present, political parties are present. I've seen other independent observers from ECOWAS and other independent groups. So it's a transparent process. And I'm sure at the end of the day, results shall be accepted. Now, finally, for me, um, there's been press conferences and counter press conferences calling uh, for victory for various political parties. As an observer in this election, what do you make of all these things that happened? That is the norm. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to run away from the fact that I've, I've worn that cap before. Nature hits a vacuum. For as long as there's a vacuum in terms of declaration of results, officially, expect the political parties to step in. It's within their legitimate right to step in. To announce the results? Not, okay. not to announce results, to assure their supporters that, hey, we have collated X number of regions, X number of constituencies. This is where we believe we are. It's legit to the extent that they are not declaring results and saying we have won then whatever they are doing is legitimate because they cannot keep the vacuum. Is it not going to create anxiety? No, no, Perhaps no. should the results, I mean, go the other way? That is why when you do that, you must do that based on figures and facts. Because at the end of the day, when the EC comes out with the final results, it will expose you if what you are saying is not true. So reassure your supporters, why not? I will not leave my supporters in the dark. No other political party will leave their supporters in the dark. Nature abhors a vacuum. But come and tell us that this is where you are, this is what you have. Just be upfront with your people. People keep saying, oh, you said comfortable it. Yes, I said comfortable it at the time because Mark Menu had held a press conference at about midnight. There was no way the NDC was going to sit down and not reassure its supporters. So you didn't have facts, but you just came to assure I am, people I am, and I am telling you that you will always do it on facts. Mm -hmm. So at the time that I held that press conference, it was based on facts. I'm sure Mark Menu also thought that he had facts. At the end of the day, we didn't declare ourselves winners. We just said that we believe that we were in a comfortable lead 
per the presidential elections. Today, it's the same thing. So let the NDC MPP go ahead, tell their story. But tell your story such that when it's all over, you will accept whatever the EC says is the truth. Koku, thank you very much thank for you. calling it always an observer at this year's election. And now, Evans, let me come to you. And I've seen Dr. Michael Pes uh, uh, Pesa right here representing the, the NDC. Now, uh, are you confident that the Electoral Commission will declare the result by, by close of day today? Yesterday, we had an issue where they, the, they, they, they said that they're going to do that at 5 p.m., but that didn't happen for you. Are you expecting that today? I well, I, I, I think the, the, the bigger part of the work was done yesterday. Right. You only left to two regions. And, and so, we must all work bearing in mind that uh, this must happen. And uh, we expect that, as I said, the regional uh, coalition center will submit their reports for us here at National to know and put them together. We must not rush. The EC earlier intended to announce within 24 hours. They came back to us that due to some challenges, they are unable to do that. Let's work together, uh, respect the rules of the game. It's not only the political parties. The observer groups are here. They are seeing what is happening. We head Kweku. Let's all appreciate the rules of the game. I think for us, as New Patriotic Party, we've always played to the rules of the game. Uh, as I said, not that we are too complacent. We know that this is an election that has gone our way. We are only the election asking. has gone your way. Yeah, it's gone our way. We are not waiting for the official declaration from the EC. We are not declaring the results. We are waiting for the EC to do the final announcement. We're saying that it's an election that has gone our way. We are still asking our base to be calm and wait for the EC to do the final declaration. Okay. Thank you very much. Evans Nwako is the director of election for the government and PP. And Michael Pesawati is here, um, representing the NDC here at the uh, National Coalition Centre. Sir, the process so far. Um, satisfied? Well, there is an element of satisfactory and there is an element of disappointment and frustration as well. Uh, satisfactory to the extent that it appears that the citizens have remained very calm and whatever we are doing here too, we are doing the best within our limits to do it in an orderly manner. Disappointments and frustrations to the extent that we've waited for more than 24 hours before we started seeing the first results from the regions coming in and information from the EC had been very, very scanty. Um, again, disappointments and dissatisfaction also because one is suspected perhaps to have seen the materials being faxed in as they come in. But what we have been seeing here in the coalition room is that the electoral officers come to distribute papers and say these are from the regions and then we have to cross check with uh, our officers in the regions. In some of the regions, uh, they have tallied. In other regions, we have huge discrepancies. And I will want to, I will want to caution that much as the Electoral Commission is trying to improve its processes, it does not need to outsource efficiency and accuracy to the regional directors because we are now beginning to measure some of the figures that are coming from some of the regions as uh, presented by the regional election directors to the EC here with what we are seeing from the various pink sheets that are coming from the constituencies and the branches and there are huge dispar disparities. Ashanti region for instance, um, our coalition figures when we look at all our, our pink sheets from the various branches and the constituencies is around 1.4 million votes. But what we have been presented here in the coalition room is about 1.79 million votes. And I think that that is a red herring that can create problems. I mean, the figure again. What I'm saying is that in Ashanti region, the figure that we have been presented here is about 1.79 million uh, votes, as opposed to what we are seeing from all the pink sheets that we have collected from that region, which is around 1.4 million. So somehow, uh, a significant amount of hundreds of thousands of votes have gotten into Ashanti that I believe we would need to probably go back to recollation by looking into the ballot boxes and looking at the numbers that have been put in there and see whether some foreign materials have gotten into that ballot box. So you're alleging that there is some stuffing? Well, yes, I am alleging that there, there is some stuffing and uh, the numbers do not measure up. So we, we, we are seeing a, a process that will probably take the long haul if the Electoral Commission will exercise patience and allow us to actually do a thorough job. There is no need to rush at all. I mean, I think that the best uh, that should come out of this process is that the mandate of the people must be respected. And the only way to do so is to do it in a manner that everybody appreciates and respects that particular process. And so that is one. Ashanti region is one. We also know that some things happen in Bono East where... 
Uh, we know we have one Bono East, and there was some violence, and some ballot boxes were destroyed here and there. And clearly, the, that was also an attempt to ensure that some of our votes were taken away. We think that that, again, is something that needs to be thoroughly investigated and looked into, and ensure that the accurate numbers are presented before any final coalition can take place. We can also talk about Northern Region that hasn't come out yet. And we know that we are leading in, we have a huge, um, I mean, lead in, in Northern Region as well. Greater Accra, we have also not seen it yet. We know we have great lead in Greater Accra. So that, that stuffing that is giving Ashanti Region a lead. Well, that's an allegation that we cannot substantiate. Well, well you may not be able you, to substantiate you, it, but you, we, you we, have, we have, we have, of the we, EC officials here. So, so this what is, has been their This response? is what we discovered after we left here last night. Mm -hmm. When we saw their figures, and then we went back, pick our pick sheets, and start doing the collation, then we realized that there are disparities in the figures. So that, that will be brought to their attention. We have duly informed the, the mother party, the NDC, that these are things that we have observed. And I think that um, it is just the right thing to do. And um, we should not be faulted for doing due diligence at all. No, with some of the collation, uh, Done. Um, it puts in another Dankwa Kufado in the lead. Uh, what we say, these allegations, uh, you want to create a fertile ground for dispute or challenging the electoral. We have won and lost elections in this country before. We are not new to it at all. And uh, in fact, the last major election in this election in this country, we lost. So we don't have a problem uh, conceding if we indeed lost. But we must we must do so only to the extent that the mandate of the people is properly res respected. And who is claiming that uh, that has put Nana Kufado clearly in the lead? That's uh, Mike Lee, Chrissy Parker Wilson, speaking to the NDC's Bessa White there. Uh, he, they're currently at the EC headquarters at the National Collation Center. We're expecting the EC to, result, uh, to declare the results, um, well, they say by close of the day today. So we are stationed there and we'll bring you every bit of detail you need to know up to the minute here on your election headquarters let's head to the volta region now ivy setaji is there for us hello ivy what's the mood in the volta region hello ivy well, we appear to have lost that feed from uh, the Volta region where Ivy Setaji is stationed. Uh, she'll be bringing us details. But we've been to uh, other parts of the country, the central region, the northeast region. We've been to Tudu here in Accra, gauging the mood of citizens as we await the declaration of the results uh, from the Electoral Commission. And uh, we're expecting that by close of day today, according to Jin Mensa, EC chairperson. This is your election headquarters and i must just as a way of reminder tell you uh that we've got uh, our, our team across the country bringing us the very latest we've also got men embedded in the team of the ndc's john dramani mahama and the team of president kufado i must say elton brobe is currently at the residence of president kufado and um, we'll be bringing you all the latest we were told that they are preparing or the president is preparing to address the nation once the EC declares the results. And uh, let me just tell you more about those who are helping us bring you election coverage here on your election headquarters. Are you tired of spending money on inferior products for your homes and offices? Are you suffering from back pain and other heart-related diseases? Do you know sitting for long hours poses a lot of health problems? One must therefore use office furniture at the lowest the risk of back pain and uh, other heart-related diseases like weight gain, high cholesterol level, stiffness of the thighs and leg muscles. Part of our limited, your home of modern furniture has brought in durable but affordable stand-up desk not only to improve your health but also to enhance productivity these desks have been engineered so you can adjust them to preferred levels suitable to work with we've got manual and electronic adjustable desks for your laptops and desktop uh, computers and also for general use it's mobile and user friendly walk into part of limited for your affordable home and office furniture today locate us at asylum down 30 meters from the runabout or contact Pad Ever Limited on 0244-533-153 or 0265-136-135-0302-220347 or on www.padeverlimited.com on Facebook is Pad P-A-D dash E-V-A Limited. Pad Ever Limited, your home of modern furniture. And would three year 
lotteries kill the stress with jumping into Trotsky's on busy appointment days with only five Ghana cities. Dial star 787 hash now to play and drive home a brand new Toyota Corolla with five cities this Saturday, 12th December 2020. Same tickets qualify you to bag home the new 395,000 city jackpot. Same draw day with thousands more cash prize. Grab your Toyota Corolla keys now with only five Ghana cities. Dial star 787 hash to play and win uh, your tier rubber ride. Star 787 hash. Ghana's premier and biggest jackpot lottery. Let's go back to the Volta region now. Ivy said is there for us. Hello, Ivy. What's the mood in the Volta region? Well, too bad. Let's head to the president's residence now. Elton Brobe is there for us. Hello, Elton. Elton, if you can hear me, tell me uh, earlier when Mama Via Uso Abwaji came to you, you were telling us how uh, the president and his team were awaiting the declaration of results by the EC before he speaks. What can you tell us now? Hello, Elton. Uh, we appear to be having a challenge with our lines. Uh, sorry about that. We'll uh, rectify that and get uh, Elton to share with us what's happening at the president's residence. But Hepaplast mixture strengthens the immune system and helps fight infections. It helps deliver. It, it helps the liver and other vital organs to correct problems such as excess body fat. Um, overweight menstrual disorders, high sugar levels, general weakness, plasmox mixture treats malaria in just four days. Just one bottle of Plasmox treats malaria by correcting your symptoms within an hour. Pavin mixture is an immune system support uh, which makes your blood cells healthy to function correctly. Hepaplast mixture is for general well-being and recommended for everyone. Hepaplast, Plasmox and Pavi are available in all drugstores, pharmacy or herbal shops near you at 10 Ghana cities nationwide. Call Eben H. Herbal Production and Consult on 0542778572 or 0549297463. This is your election headquarters live on the Joy News channel and on Joy 99.7 FM, also on myjoyonline.com around the world. Uh, if Elton can hear me now, hello Elton. A contestant in this year's election, uh, the outcome we are yet to know. And the information is that the Electoral Commission will, in the few hours to come, declare the winner of the elections and perhaps uh, those who have won various seats to go to Parliament. Now, the House of the President is getting itself in readiness to talk to the media. And I'm, my information is that the President will speak to the media immediately after the formal announcement that will come from the Electoral Commission. Already, we are picking information that some of the contestants in the election have already called into conceit and have, as a matter of fact, congratulated President Akufuado. We know yesterday that the flag bearer of the GCPP, Henry Latte, uh, conceded and he called President Akufuado to that effect. We also know that the flag bearer of the LPG, Kofi Apalu, also called to say the same. And then this morning, we have been told that the flag bearer of the Ghana Union Movement, uh, also known as Sofu Chabosom, uh, has also called uh, to concede and has also congratulated President Kufuado on his re election. The basis for this uh, con uh, concession, we have been told, we are yet to know. But what we are picking from the stables of the MPP is that per their own calculation which uh, they did from across the 275 constituencies in the country. They are leading, indeed, they are in a better position to form the next government. They are also uh, uh, confident that the figures they have tallies with what they are reading or, 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 or getting from the various media houses that have also uh, collated results and are in the process of projecting or have projected. Uh, mention has been made of Joy News, Adum TV, and the other media houses, and they say that the figures that they are seeing uh, in the media tallies with what they've also put out. And they say that this gives them so much confidence that uh, the Electoral Commission chairperson, uh, Jane Mensah, will eventually declare President Kufa as winner uh, in the elections that just passed, and they are hoping that they will be able to form 
a majority in parliament, even though we are looking at a very slim margin. What I've picked from their stables again is that they are they've so far collated 137 uh, constituencies, which they believe that they've won, and that gives them some kind of an edge going forward. They also have an independent candidate who won Formina in the Ashanti region, and they say that that person is likely to do business with the MPP in the next parliament. They're also looking at uh, getting uh, the seats that are in contention. We are talking about Sevi also and Pandai. So the, the optimism from the part of the MPP uh, is quite high. They are confident that they will emerge victorious despite reservations by the main opponent in the elections, John Mahama and the NDC. So for now, from the uh, residence of President Okuvar, as you can see behind me, uh, the, the house is getting itself ready. I can see the Ghana flag and uh, the, the podium. And once the Electoral Commission chairperson is done with the announcement, then President Kufado will follow. Will it be a concession or an acceptance? Uh, uh, this is what we all of us are waiting to hear the president speak to. Very well, Elton. Uh, we will touch base with you once we know uh, the president is ready to speak. Uh, but let me take you now to Albert Sorry, who is in the Upper East Region. Hello, Albert. What's happening in the Upper East Region? Hello, Ben. Can you hear me? Hello, Albert. Yes, I can. Yes, so... It's, it's normal day uh, here in Bogatanga in the Upper East region. Um, just like in many places across the country, people are just waiting uh, for the Electoral Commission to declare the election results. Uh, but many people are going to work. Uh, there are no uh, celebrations whatsoever like we have seen in other parts of the country. Uh, we do know is that the NDC has won a uh, majority of the seats in, 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 uh, in the Upper East region. Out of the 15 constituencies, uh, the results which have uh, been declared at the regional level show that the MPP has only won the Induri seats um, out of the 15. So, you know, Everything here is, is just normal activity and people are just waiting to hear uh, the Electoral Commission declare the results at the national level. Uh, Albert, I don't know if you've been able to get a word from uh, your regional minister, Tangoba uh, Bayage, who went on the, the ticket of the uh, NPP in one of the constituencies. She actually uh, won the primaries against Kofi Ada, who is an incumbent, and she lost. She, we've seen a post by her on social media, uh, well, conceding, but ha have you been able to get a word from her? Exactly, Ben. It's, I covered the Nabrongo Central constituency. That is where Tangoba Abayagi uh, con contested on the tickets of the new patriotic party. Uh, we got the opportunity to speak to her after she cast her vote uh, on the day of the election. Uh, in the morning, around 8 a.m., you know, she, she, she uh, uh, cast her vote and gave us an interview. She was very confident of winning uh, the seat at the end of the day. Uh, unfortunately, she did not uh, win. The seat has now gone to the NDC. Uh, and yesterday, after the results were declared, we got the opportunity to talk to the NDC parliamentary candidate, Samson Tangombu Chiragia. Uh, he, he also said that he was very confident he was going to win because he was more on the ground. Uh, Tangoba Abayage did not come to the coalition center where the results uh, of the election was declared. But this morning, uh, a radio station here in Boga reported that they spoke with her. And one of the reasons she gave uh, was that um, she alleges that Kofiada was on the ground campaigning against her, uh, and that is the reason she lost. 
Now, she has also indicated to Dreams FM here in Bogatanga, in fact, uh, they are the affiliate station to Joy FM here in Boga. And they have reported that Angupa said she has evidence to show that Kofiada her on the phone and she says that she's, she's, uh, she's holding her head up high and you know she just she knows that the president is going to win the election this is what she says and afterwards uh, a lot of things will go on she doesn't feel uh, defeated she believes that she gave him a very good fight across the country that women in politics can make a difference so for her uh, she's she's not I am out, but uh, there are some breakages in, in your line there. But uh, the, uh, Tango Babayag is saying that she's hopeful of a win for President Ekufado. Does that in any way suggest she's hopeful of another appointment? Well, we lost... Uh Albert Sorry there, but that was Albert Sorry coming to us from the Upper East Region capital, Bolgatanga. We're gauging the mood across the country as we get to the final lap. And you know, in any race, it's usually uh, quite tiring and slow for a lot of people uh, as you get to the final lap. And, uh, and so you can un understand why there appears to be a, a general sense of fatigue, even for people who've been sitting behind their television sets and behind your phones, just waiting to know what the East has to say or waiting to uh, know who's won this election and uh, which of the parties has the majority in parliament. But let's head to the Bunu region now. Precious Semevo is there for us. Hello, Precious. Hello, Benny. Yeah, there were some issues in the Bunu region uh, earlier. Uh, have those been resolved? Bunu region with 12 constituencies. Uh, all the constituencies have been sorted out they've been declared results have been certified to the extent that all constituency results has been sent to or were sent to the regional coalition center in sunyani and then the regional uh, ec boss mr frank nunu uh, did the declaration that is for the presidential uh, race uh, yesterday so as far as bono region is concerned uh, we have no issue or it has been certified and as it stands now, uh, everything is going on peacefully. But as to the electric, the voters or residents in Sunyani, the town remains calm. Uh, although before then, Sunyani, it's relatively a, a peaceful and a calm uh, area to live. People are just going about their normal uh, duty. Occasionally, you see people uh, in groups uh, talking about uh, the fallout of the resort, particularly the uh, parliamentary, you know, race, uh, whilst they wait for the final result to be declared, that is for the presidential by the electoral uh, commissioner. But in the Bono region, as you may have already heard, you know, some big shots, you know, fell out uh, after the, the resort. Now, it, it's, it's a bit interesting. It, it suggests that the northern part of the Bono region uh, was completely taken by the uh, NDC. Now, if you start from German North, German, German South to German North to Tyne constituency, you continue to Wenchi and then to Banda. All these constituency along that which forms the northern part of the Bono region were taken by the NDC. Now, before then, MPP uh, were in control of all these seats, but one. Out of the 12 seats in the Bono region, NDC had only one seat. That is the seat in the Banda constituency. But after the election, they've had more. They've split the seats, 6-6 six, six as it stands now. And that includes German North, German South, which is the seat currently being held by the Deputy Aviation Minister, uh, Mr. Yao Afo. Uh, he has lost his seat. Uh, I remember some time ago, I went there and it was clear that they were going to vote skirt and blouse. And indeed, that is what happened. NDC won, but mm. uh, President Kufado mm. won that seat. In the German uh, north to the deputy Bono regional minister, uh, Shaka Stevens, also lost his seat. Mm. And if you go to Tai Gabriel Osei, who is also the incumbent, lost 
Uh, and then right, go precious. to MP, a senior minister, a member of the economic management team of the new patriotic party. Oh, also lost. All right. Uh, precious some of other coming to us from Sunyani in the Punu region. And uh, let's go back to the Upper East region and speak to Regional Minister Tangoba Abayege. And uh, you heard me there speaking earlier with our, our correspondent there who spoke about uh, how she believes her contest for the seat for Navrongo Central will be an inspiration for women who want to enter politics. And, and I'm speaking to Tango Babayage now. Thank you, ma'am, and welcome to your election headquarters. Uh, you have come out to concede, uh, but we, we're hearing that you have some issues with uh, your colleague in the NPP who you uh, won against in the primaries, uh, Mr. Kofiada, Aviation Minister. Hello, ma'am. Well, apologies. Uh, I, I, I'm sure we had her on the line, but we just lost it just when we were getting uh, her to confirm what we had heard uh, about her concerns with Mr. Kofi Ada campaigning against her. Uh, but she's Upper East Regional Minister Tango Babayake, who was contesting for the seat uh, of Navrongo Central. She's lost there, uh, but she, she says all hope is not lost uh, uh, as she's expecting that the president will win. The, the national elections. Uh, I, I, w I would like to find out from her whether she's hopeful of another appointment uh, with that uh, particular hope she expresses. But we'll try and raise her again. Uh, great, we have her back. Uh, thank you for joining us, ma'am, and welcome to your election headquarters. Hello, ma'am. Uh, this is your election headquarters on Joy 99.7 and on the Joy News channel. Uh, do get interactive with us. Hashtag election HQ is, uh, is a hashtag to use on Twitter. And uh, follow us on Facebook. We are Joy News on TV and Joy 99.7 FM. I see all of you watching us on Facebook. I see the comments. Uh, uh, some of you interacting with yourselves there. We'd just like to advise you to keep it uh, very civil and uh, no insults, no name calling. This is uh, democracy but it has to be practiced in a clean manner. Hopefully, we can get a response from Madam Tangoba Abaige now. Hello, ma'am. Thank you and welcome to your election headquarters. Thank you very much. Good oh, great morning. to have I'm, you. I, I will alert you. Yes, good morning. Yeah, uh, and, and well, commiserations uh, on your loss there. But uh, you believe that this is... Right away. Hello. Hello. Uh, apologies for the break uh, in transmission there, but if you can hear me, Madam Tangoba Abayage, uh, yes, I, I was asking if you believe that your decision to contest as uh, an MP, even though you lost, is, is a good sign for, for women who it, want to enter politics. Can you repeat the question? The line is so bad. Oh, too bad. Can you hear me now, please? Yes, I can. All right, great. I, I'm saying that you have expressed hope that your decision to contest as member of parliament for Navrongo Central will inspire a lot of women to enter politics. How so? Well, um, of course, you, 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 you know, I don't like playing the gender card, but usually, whether you are a female or male, when you enter into any enterprise at all, and, uh, and you are a visionary thinker, your idea for entering that enterprise is to inspire people, to inspire the ones, the next generation. Uh, once you do it right, even if you fail, you fall and you get up, you're expecting that people will take inspiration for whatever you're doing, including the, the fact that you've got your foot stuck and you're able to pull out your, your foot and move on. So definitely, my, my idea for contest was just not to inspire the, the, the ones after me. It was to win. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't win, but uh, I'm happy that 
I've been able to inspire the young ones after me, especially the female. I've, mm. I've had a lot of uh, messages of how I'm inspired people to be strong and bold in, in this enterprise called the world is mm. politics. Mm. Yes, and I'm happy about that. All right. You, you were very confident of a win. Even after casting your vote, you spoke to uh, our <laughs> correspondent, Albert Soria. What do you think led to your loss? Well, I won't be able to tell. You know, uh, the, the, electorate, the electorate always have their, their mind of their own. I believe strongly that we conducted a fierce, there was a campaign. It was very fierce. Um, um, when I say fierce, not violent, but a spirited campaign from all angles. We did our best. We sold our message. We had a clear-cut message. We had a vision for, for, for the constituency. We spelled it out to them. And I believed at that time that from the work we had done and the message we had carried across and the way people had received the message, we were going to win. I was very confident. Mm. Whatever happened, uh, <clears throat> you will maybe later on when we do post-mortem, be able to gather what happened. But you know, again, in politics, like this, it's not everything that happened that you would like to throw out to the public. So we'll definitely be doing a post-mortem, but uh, mm. I'm happy I went into this context. Mm. We, we, we've received reports that you have said on radio stations in Bolgatanga that uh, Mr. Kofi Ada <coughs> campaigned against you. Is, is that true? Did you make those statements? Um, a radio station, a radio station, not radio station, a radio station. All right, a radio station. Yeah. And I said I have evidence, not that I, not, not, not that I am speculating. I have evidence, concrete evidence that uh, he campaigned against me. And he sponsored, uh, he sponsored, he sponsored uh, my opponent. Interestingly, I mean, as a member of parliament for this government uh, the, and the minister, you are expecting that if he's supporting the other candidates, which, well, that's his choice, he will support our party. If he did, anyway, I don't know. But not a bottle of water did we receive from the Honorable Kofi Adda for this campaign. Well, I have evidence that he gave support to the other candidates. And I'm talking of massive support to the NDC and the PPP uh, candidates, both of whom rather campaigned against me. But you know what? I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not holding him responsible. Maybe eventually we'll still have to take our own uh, collective responsibility. But yes, on mm -hmm. the other campaign, big cross, not only him, big cross, he and his, his supporters against my and my 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 candidate that day won the, I, I, after you won the primaries against him did you ever try a meeting did you uh you know extend we did, we did, we did. a hand to him ask for maybe <laughs> advice support we did i did i personally did i did i i, I met him I met the Honorable Kofiada. I apologized to him for being not wrong. In fact, I wept when I was apologizing to him. You apologized to him for being what? Yeah, Sorry, I we did didn't hear for, that. You for, apologized for, for to winning, him? For winning the private. Why would you do that? Because well, I had to apologize to him, beg him to come on board. I have the evidence. Okay. The day we were filing, we were to file for the general election. Mm. I met Kofiada. In Bolgatanga, was in the meet. I apologized. He told me that he didn't have anything against me. He had something against my uh, what, what do you call it? Those around me. I said, well, unfortunately, although I'm not supposed to be held responsible, I will plead with you to forgive them for the sake of the party. I cried wept when I was apologizing to him. He so refused to accept. Well, if he accepted my apology, I don't know because. What he did later on doesn't show anywhere that he accepted my apology. But as I said, I have evidence, concrete evidence, mm. of him sponsoring the other candidate. Okay. Um, um, I have videos uh, to testify to that. You have a video. It would be great to, to get Mr. Kofiada to uh, tell us his side of the story in regards to well, this. So let's just move away from the, the bit of he working against you. <clears throat> in this particular yeah. election. And uh, on, on that same radio station in Bolgatanga, you mentioned that you were hopeful of a win for President Kufado. And, and that was a, is that a bit of a consolation for you? Well, of course, I mean, he's my, he's, my, he's my presidential candidate. 
Even if I lose, why should I waste my president's vote? Especially after the big cross kind of campaign we have done. That would be madness. So I'm happy the president is winning. I'm happy uh, he'll be declared the president at the end of the day. For me, I mean, yeah, it is a consolation that we didn't lose both. And I'm happy that the president has won. It's sad that uh, we didn't win our seat. It's very sad. But as I said, I'm not holding. I will, as a leader, I mean, I will have to take personal responsibility. Despite the fact that we had all the odds against us, I will take personal responsibility for that. All right, uh, ma'am, does this in any way suggest you're hopeful of a of another appointment if President Ekufado wins? It's, it's too early in the day. The mm. prerogative is for the president. It's not mine. Yes, but are you hopeful let's, of one? No, you're, you're, let's leave that. No, I, I, unfortunately, I won't, I won't answer that. All right, that, that. that's let's fine. That Fair, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I, mm, I, I appreciate... I appreciate that you could talk to us, but before you go, um, if we don't see you in politics again, what's the plan? What, what, do, you, what do you intend to do? What do you mean by you don't see me in politics? I'm a politician. Yes, I know, but I mean active. <laughs> I mean, because you just mentioned is the president's politics. prerogative. So I'm just saying, what does the future hold for Tangoba? I'm a, I'm a politician. I mean, well, look, being in politics does not mean being in the political office. We have a lot of politicians who are not in any political form of office. So once I'm a politician, I go ahead and I work. I work. The politics is me. I've been a politician for a long time. It's just that I wasn't in the limelight. Exactly. But I'm here. Yes, I'm here. I'm, I'm going to be in politics for a long time. Maybe for the rest of my life. I appreciate that you could talk to us, ma'am. Uh, we wish you, you all the best. That's Tangoba Abaya guest speaking to us there. Um, <coughs> she lost the Navrongo Central seat, and uh, she's just been sharing with us what uh, she believes led to that loss and the post-mortem they'll be doing. And uh, she's also mentioned how hopeful she is that President Okofado will win the elections uh, this is your election headquarters well we're waiting for the electoral commission to tell us or to announce or declare the results and we are live in the ec's headquarters but uh while we wait for that let me bring you some details from the ghana police service and the national election security tax force has policed the 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections professionally and lords the public for their cooperation with pre-election security measures put in place and executed through the electioneering period. Well, they go to give us details of recorded cases. However, between seven hours, uh, that's uh, the time of uh, 7th December 2020, and 10 o'clock of 9th December 2020, the Joint Operations Center of the National Election Security Tax Force, that's NEST, has recorded a total of 61 electoral and post-electoral incidents nationwide. 21 of the incidents are true cases of electoral violence, six of which involve gunshots resulting in the death of five. And this is coming from the Ghana Police Service. Central region, uh, so they go out to give the details. Central region, Ewutu Senya East constituency, two injured from a shooting incident by civilians in the community during election period on the 7th of December. Greater Accra region, Odododio Dio, two dead and six injured from a shooting incident by civilians in the community during post-election period of 7th December 2020. Greater Accra region of Lekuma Central, four injured, including a policeman, from a shooting incident at the collation center during post-election period of 8th December 2020. Bunu East region, Techiman South constituency, two dead, four injured. In the northern region, Savalugu constituency, uh, a shooting incident by civilians at the police station when people besieged the station during post-election period uh, on the 8th of December 2020. So those are details we are getting from the Ghana Police Service here on your election headquarters. We'll bring you more.
So uh, we take a breather now.